America's residential past is destroying opportunity. If, if high opportunity is sequestered only in certain places, neither cities nor struggling suburbs nor far out rural hamlets are an engine of opportunity in this country anymore. We're not the land of opportunity in this system of residential past. So I've been a professor at Georgetown Law for 25 years. And I've written a new book, White Space, Black Hood, Opportunity Hoarding and Segregation in the Age of Inequality. And in that book, I'm shining a light on American residential caste. So American residential caste is a system that was intentionally constructed to create affluent white spaces separated and apart from high poverty black neighborhoods. We overinvest in and exclude in affluent white space and we disinvest in prey upon the people trapped in the hood. So there are three anti-black processes that undergird residential caste. Boundary maintenance, opportunity hoarding, and stereotype-driven surveillance. Boundary maintenance is a polite word for segregation. The most persistent types of neighborhoods in large metropolitan or even medium metropolitan areas is affluent white space and high poverty minority neighborhoods, particularly black neighborhoods. They have persisted and the boundaries to those two types of neighborhoods have gotten harder. We're more segregated now um, than we were 20 years ago at these polar extremes. Opportunity hoarding is over investing in affluent majority white space uh, and disinvesting elsewhere, particularly in black neighborhoods. We tend to you know, use exclusionary zoning, neighborhood assignment, the boundaries of jurisdictions, to hoard the opportunities there. Golden infrastructure in schools, wonderful transportation, job-rich social networks. Everyone else who's excluded from those high opportunity environments subsidizes that, right? Through taxation, through gasoline taxes, that gorgeous golden infrastructure is paid for and subsidized by the people who are excluded. And then the third is stereotype-driven surveillance by police, and by private citizens. As with slavery and Jim Crow, um, a lot of non-black citizens have been conscripted into policing back bodies. Stereotype-driven surveillance, it's driven by this idea that that, that kind of behavior is deserved in, in majority black neighborhoods. Police go through there with a lens, uh, you know, every young man is presumed a thug rather than a citizen. The beauty of, once you understand the processes, they actually provide the way forward. You basically abolish and reverse them. Inclusion rather than exclusion, with boundary maintenance. Uh, giving historically defunded neighborhoods priority in investing rather than opportunity hoarding and, and disinvesting in blackness. Humanization and care rather than stereotype-driven surveillance. A city that's gone through abolition repair, what I imagine and envision is that they will have returned to being engines of opportunity, particularly for poor people in poor neighborhoods. See them as assets and give them a chance to be an agent in their own liberation.